CNBC TV 18, embarking on a quarter century of excellence. Well, it's a stampede out there. And when I, when I say stampede, I mean a bull stampede. People just want in. It doesn't matter what price, it doesn't matter what level. And you can see it very clearly on the screen. A terrific day, a terrific week it's turning out to be as we wrap up things here over the, la over the next 60 minutes here on Closing Bell. We're coming to you from the CNBC TV 18 Motor Roosevelt Studios. I'm Prashant with me. My colleagues Reema and Manglam is here uh, for the last uh, hour's action. Guys, hi. Hi, you know, you spoke about st stampede and you know how people are running and the market is fueled. The fuel stocks themselves, you have HPCL, IOC, uh, PPCL, all of them spiking, oil at benign levels. Anything and everything you hit a dartboard at is uh, higher by around 3 to 4 or 5% maybe. Mm. I think there is some real FOMO going on. Yeah. Right? I mean, you see prices going up and you say, well... I want in. I just want in. I mean, it doesn't matter because, I mean, you know... Actually, it's true. I was talking to an investor and he said, he told me, just feedback, he said, you know, we were asking for money from a family office hmm. and uh, they were, they'd given some money and they said, well, the plan was to invest it uh, via a systematic uh, kind of plan over just the next three or six time. months, <laughs> right after the election results. I mean, hmm. it was that weekend which came through. Monday, nothing happened. Tuesday, they got a phone call saying, well, you know, and let's just go, all of it. put all of it in. So, you know, as you so, say, right, more <clears throat> money is lost waiting for a correction rather than the correction itself, right? <laughs> so, maybe that's just what's happening now. Absolutely. I mean, uh, yeah, but, you know, uh, it's just uh, incredible. Uh, it's, you know, by the way, the last week was, what, 3.5% for yeah. the Nifty. This week, it's 2%. So, you're talking about 5.5% gains uh, in two weeks flat. And this is not some stock we're talking about. This is the index, right? Uh, so, uh, it's uh, been that kind of uh, uh, last two weeks. La the previous week, of course, was all local. Uh, the election results being the mo dominant driver. This week, of course, it's the Fed pivot, uh, which has really sparked this big, big move. Uh, just a couple of points before, uh, <clears throat> you know, I, I kind of go any further. Uh, so, I think uh, you've got today, uh, just to kind of take stock. Uh, for the, by the way, for the week, mid-caps and small-caps are 3% up as well. Uh, Bank Nifty is kind of trailing a little bit with the just under 2% gains. The Nifty IT index... That index, I looked at uh, sort of returns from the lows day before yesterday, 10%, 9.9% on the Nifty IT index. And, uh, you know, we, we'll talk more about this. This is going to be one thing we'll discuss in some detail here. On the Nifty, if you're thinking about what are, how do you project levels higher because you're on uncharted territory, there is a rising upward trend line. And that we put this number out in the morning as well. That stands at uh, 21,750. Uh, but, you know, the gap is closing so fast and we are now... Uh, about about 400 odd points away uh, as we speak. So just a very, very powerful move is what we're seeing. Well, a lot of it is courtesy IT. So pull up the yeah. contribution plate. The Nifty is up close to about 165 <laughs> points right now. Out of that, 110 to 120 points is courtesy the large cap IT names. So Infosys is the top gainer in terms of a contribution with an up move of 52 points. TCS is contributing about 33 points. And lower down, if you go, you would see even Tech Mahindra, LTI, Mindtree, Wipro are contributing. So about 70 to 75% of the Nifty gains today are on account of IT. Reliance too is a big mover. Banks were not performing. In fact, in the first half of the trading session, if you pull up, the Nifty Bank was absolutely flat. It was the it was the IT index doing the heavy lifting. But now look at that banking index in the last you know one hour of trade. It's picked up pace and is currently up close to about half odd percent. And one more stock, you know, uh, IREDA, right? Yep. Five days and the stock had doubled. And today you are seeing some profit booking. It's locked in a lower circuit of about 10%. But this follows five days, five days of big gains when the stock had doubled from 60, 65 to about 120. You know, we usually see that in a lot of these uh, new IPOs that have come by, which had a fair amount of demand for the issue itself. The first few days of them in the bourses, on the bourses, see a lot of purchase that's also on account of lack of supply because most of the shareholders have been locked. So let's see whether that, you know, uh, lock in whenever that opens. Uh, what happens when there is a first uh, brush of supply coming in in all of these new names? But I take your point, Rima. You know, it's the IT index, and in the second half, it's the Nifty Bank, which was uh, pausing for breath in the first half of trade itself. And over the weekend, by the way, guys, in Bangalore, mm. there is a big rock concert going on. <coughs> um, you have the Goo Goo Dolls performing, you have oh, wow. uh, Deep Purple performing. What have you? 
Uh, ahead of that, I think the streets taken note and the music today is heavy metal. The metal index <laughs> is at uh, near record high. We have, uh, you know, most of the metal stocks doing well, starting from uh, the PSU metal stocks. We have Nalco, which is doing well. Sale did well in yesterday's trading session, entered mm -hmm. FNO ban. And now as we speak, you know, all the metal stocks uh, are at the high point of trade. So those are the, you know, sectors and stocks which are doing well. In terms of levels that one has to look at, one also has to keep an eye out on the expiry next week. Yesterday was weekly options expiry. To that, the Nifty 21,300 mark seems to be a bit of a fulcrum because we are seeing a fair amount of writing at both the 21,300 call and the put. On the put, there is 80 rupees of premium on offer. On the call, there's close to around 140 rupees of premium on offer. Round that up, close to around 200 rupees on offer. You're looking at a range between 21,100 to 21,500. For the Nifty Bank, 48,000 seems to be a bit of a resistance. That's where we're seeing a bit of, uh, you know, called writing. So that's something we'll be watching out for. And in terms of stocks, it's the mid-cap IT, large-cap IT, any IT names which are doing well, seeing fair amount of long positions being added. But short positions in a market like this are far and few in between, and they are all life insurance names. Mm -hmm. All of them for the second day running are seeing a sell-off underperformance and fresh short positions being added on them. Our insurance man will join us. Yep. With the, with on the <laughs> value surrender. <coughs> surrender Josh is waiting right news. outside. He's, he's <laughs> going to tell us more about this. But yeah, I mean, in a, in a booming market, that's the space which is actually taking uh, a bit of a knock. Malam, uh, Google also is still performing. It's uh, Yes, they are. Yeah, outstanding. Uh, <laughs> you know, just the way uh, the stock market uh, participants <coughs> and all the investors think mm. that there is no other place but India, all the uh, you know musicians, uh, musicians and all those performers yeah. who have had their day in the yes, sun uh, 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 in, in the Western countries and now coming to India because everyone's lapping uh, these performances. That's my, that's my kind of music. My, my, my era, uh, not our my era. era, but our era. I mean, well, yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, you guys seem to talk about yeah, You span across uh, <laughs> but, uh, eras with your choice. Uh, I'll be going there. So in case you want to oh, go there, yeah, 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 I'll be so there. I thought when you said Bangalore, you're referring to the you know money <laughs> control CNBC <laughs> when he, when he, TV 18 AI it, Summit. Exactly. And I was like, oh, he's going to be there tomorrow. I mean, AI Summit is fun, but not sure it'll be as fun as Deep Purple and Google. <laughs> it could You've be, got my vote It could there. be interesting if we get them to play there. <laughs> the AI <laughs> guys? <laughs> the other way around. <laughs> Alright, anyway, let's just uh, get back to the market. We'll uh, tell you what to do now. Mitesh is with us with exactly that. Mitesh, hi. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's <clears throat> big, big moves. And I think every time we talk to you, that's the phraseology we use the most. Big moves. That's the kind of market we seem to be in. What to do now, though, as we get into the weekend mode, uh, Mitesh? Prashant, I think, you know, uh, one, uh, as I said, I think this market will uh, enjoy good momentum on the upside and there's no sign of reversal. So I think maintain long position, I think that's a very simple way of uh, trading a market which is showing directional bias, trended bias. And now I think I would want to trail the stop loss at 21,200 on the spot, uh, which is where, which is just about yesterday's high and there's a gap uh, created today morning. And uh, again, I think there's good amount of upside, I believe, is left in the bank nifty, which would still... Uh, in the short term, try and test 48,500, but eventually I'm looking at 49,500 to 50,000 zone as the uh, target area. So, uh, maintain your long bias. On the stock side, I have a buy on Federal Bank. That's a stock which has given a mild uh, breakout. So, keep a stop at 153, look for targets of 164 here. And granules, a uh, disclaimer, it's a part of my portfolio. Granules could be now seeing some signs of accumulation. So, buy here and accumulate slowly with the stop below 380. Look for targets of 410. Okay, those were some uh, trading ideas. Let's <coughs> talk about IT. Uh, the IT index has seen a rally of 7.5% in two days. And if you compare it with the Wednesday intraday low, then we're looking at a near 9-10% kind of a rally. Large cap moves in two days. 6% for TCS, Infi up 8%, 8.5% for HCL Tech. And HCL Tech was a stock which was already at record highs and it continues to add some more. Mid-cap IT soared in the last two days with a double-digit up move for Mastec, Sign, Persistent and Emphasis. Gains ranging between 10 to 11%. So what's driving the up move? One, the Nifty IT index is still not at its all-time high level, which is a number above 39,000. It's still about 10% away from those levels. And if you look at the individual names, HCL Tech is at a record high. TCS is about 8% away. Infi, 20%. Tech Mahindra, 30 And Wipro, 40%. That's one. 
there is that catch up versus the rest of the market which is at all time high levels too valuations too are not at their peak levels uh, so for tcs now with the up move the stock is trading at 26 26 and a half times forward multiple the peak valuation multiple for it names was sometime in you know um, in the early part of 2022 in the post covid digitization boom and digital transformation became the name of the game all these stocks saw a you know big pe re rating so stocks is still not at the record pe levels and there is hope that demand will bottom out with macroeconomic certainty so clients will start loosening their purse strings and start spending also if many of the clients of it company were debt ridden they had debt um, now the amount that they need to pay out for financing the debt will also come down with the expected decline in interest rates so in that sense there is going to be cash saving actual cash saving for uh, clients of it company which could be deployed for technology spending now that's the positive what's driving the rally what's the risk the near term is still very very muted uh, companies that we've chatted with analysts who've spoken to companies at various conferences have indicated that q3 furloughs are probably going to be higher than normal they haven't seen any improvement in demand not that it's deteriorated but demand continues to remain muted there haven't been any mega deals if you remember the story for it over the last 6 months has been very large cost optimization deals but this time in q3 at least we haven't seen any such mega deals and that said clients are still not talking about when demand will revive they're not saying they're, they're just saying it's too early to assess when we will see a pick up in corporate spending you know despite uh, the recent news flow about the decline in the 10 year yields we've got uh, sandeep uh, agrawal fund manager at sovilo investment manager is now joining in uh, sandeep first tell us what is the corporate speak that you've picked up from management in the last um, you know one week two weeks and secondly uh, the people who are willing to invest in it stocks now can you tell us what is their thesis narrative what are they talking about hi thanks for having me on the show and good afternoon so yes so the interactions which we have in last few weeks uh, at various forums and also the people uh, because i come from this industry and a lot of friends are working in different tech companies uh, in us and other uh, developed markets what we are uh, now you know getting information uh, or 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 you know the new way they are looking at is that you know as it has been post covid also that you know they were continuously spending on digital transformation uh, there was a halt in between and 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 after that uh, in recent few months what we are hearing is that you know they are again reevaluating this is the time when they can they have to take a call whether you know the next year that is cy24 uh, they how much budget they want to uh, keep for it and that is the reason you know there are some uh, <laughs> discussions which have been going through having said so i i do, as you rightly mentioned i don't see that you know you will see any big change in numbers in next three months but yes i think order book numbers which were good last quarter also that trend will continue in this quarter also but the bigger thing i say i would say for the sector with a sharp fall which you saw in attrition because that will lead to substantial jump in margins in the coming quarter so it will be margin led recovery for, followed by growth that is the way i see the sector are investors cutting checks to buy it at current levels see there are some investors you know there are multiple type of investors who are looking at the sector right now one set of investors are are the one who you know are putting money in the index funds and the etfs and others so by default because of the weight this is this uh, stocks are also being bought in an indirect way and secondly you know uh, there are some investors who uh, run tech funds there they have started seeing flows so that is another reason why uh, there is a uh, there is a rally in these names and third i think you know the biggest reason is that with interest rates uh, at least there is a uh, signal that they may not go much higher from here in the developed markets and primarily in the us which is the biggest market for indian tech companies i think you know investors are taking a call that the best way to play interest rate uh, fall cycle uh, uh, will be to buy tech names and that is what they are doing right now so i think <laughs> all right uh... You know, meanwhile, as we speak, in <coughs> sight of uh, the macros as well, the rupee has seen a big, big surge. It's it's about to, you know, break the 83 to the dollar mark. And uh, that's also on account of what's taken place uh, overnight uh, in the dollar index itself. The dollar index has, uh, you know, moved below that 102 mark, which is uh, the lowest levels that we've seen, if I remember, since August uh, or, or so. And the rupee has gained more than 30 paise from yesterday's close. Hit a one-month high. It'll be very interesting to see where uh, you know the rupee goes here and 
Will that prove to be a bit of a headwind for IT companies as well as we speak? Though, you know, the dependence, the cross-currency movements have seemed to have lesser impact on IT names uh, uh, over the last uh, couple of years or so. Your thoughts on this one? So I think, you know, as you again rightly said that, you know, uh, currency has not been a big a big mo mover on either side in the past because these companies all work on a continuous hedge basis. Most of the companies follow continuous hedge uh, for, uh, policy. And because of that, maybe you can get some changes on the headline numbers, but bottom line numbers don't change much. So I think that same thing will continue. Uh, I think, you know, most of the IT companies are well positioned at 80, 81 rupees. Right now we are at 83, so some depreciation from here will not hurt, some appreciation from here will not hurt them in, in that significant way. Right now, I think the biggest delta for all the companies is the sharp fall in attrition which they have seen last quarter and that trend is continuing right now. So that is helping their margins in a very big way. That is the key takeaway, I think, which is happening in the sector. Mm. Sandeep, uh, <clears throat> what is, I mean, <clears throat> if for people who are watching, if you were to give them uh, one idea, what would that be in this space? Mm. So I, I will put it, see, it is very difficult for me to give one idea because we run a PMS and we hold many stocks, but I will I will give you an indication that, you know, and I have been saying this for last several months, every time on your show and other shows also, that you should be with large cap value names like take Mahindra, HCL, take few other names, where, you know, you uh, the downside risk is very less and also these are very high dividend paying companies. So cash distribution is very strong and also, you know, growth, they have always surprised positively. And at least, you know, places where there is a new CEO coming in, the, the chances of big turnaround, as we have seen in multiple uh, mid-sized companies in past three years, those remains high. So I will still say that, you know, you should chase value with growth and not only growth and pay very expensive multiples right now. So you should Just, look at large cap names. <clears throat> okay. Two, two specific names, if you can uh, comment. One is uh, Wipro. Nobody wants to talk about Wipro. Uh, and I don't think there's any ownership there as well, right? So it's extremely under-owned. Uh, and maybe for good reason, it's not performed for me. But how long can it <clears throat> go this way, right? I mean, so that is one. Uh, what are the chances uh, on that one, uh, briefly? And second is InfoEdge, which has done well. I think it's moved up about 15, 20% over the last three months. Uh, but that last, lastly seems to be a function of uh, how Zomato has done. Uh, how, what are prospects for that one? Go on. So I think, you know, in the former case, in case of Wipro, uh, I will only say when the sector does well, all the companies do well. And where there is valuation comfort, those stocks generally catch up quicker. So I think at this level, uh, the risks are very limited. As far as InfoAge is concerned, as you yourself mentioned that, you know, uh, uh, it, it has become now a bigger derivative of how Zomato does. And based on what we are seeing in the current environment, if you know, there will be political stability and the economy will do well. These are somewhere, you know, second or third derivative of economy as well. So I think even InfoAge should do well. And InfoAge is actually basically a best way to play a collection of, you know, disruptive uh, technologies or disruptive startups in the country. So I always believe that it is a must-own stock for most of the people who are looking from a long-term perspective. All right, uh, Sandeep, we'll leave it there. <clears throat> Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, it's a good conversation always and come back more often. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, good to speak. Thanks very much. Well, 180 points on the Nifty, 21,360 is where we are at. So it's a, a good-looking screen out there. Rupin Rajguru of uh, Julius Bear will be joining, on, joining in on the other side with more on the market. Stay with us. on a quarter century of excellence.
CNBC TV 18, embarking on a quarter century of excellence. All right, welcome back. Uh, 180 points on the Nifty. But if you're wondering, if you've been wondering, why are in such a up and up kind of a market insurance stocks lower? Uh, that is because the regulator, the IR uh, DAI, has proposed that insurance policyholders be paid a higher amount in cases where they sur surrender their policy before it matures. The proposal has uh, companies worried about margin pressure. Uh, to understand this move, I've got uh, my colleague Yash standing by uh, to explain this in uh, some detail. Yash, over to you. Well, uh, if you look at the insurance regulator's proposal, there are two major changes to product regulations. One would cheer policyholders and the other one spells good news for life insurance companies. Let's start with the policyholders. IRDAI has proposed increasing the surrender value of life insurance policies. Surrender value is nothing but the refund which life insurance companies have to give to their policyholders in case he or she terminates the policy before its maturity. Now, the proposal is to increase the surrender value uh, given to the policyholders and reduce the surrender charges retained by life insurance companies. This is definitely beneficial for policyholders as uh, he or she gets more when the policy is terminated but negative for life insurance companies as they get to retain less in surrender charges. The move will impact a non-participating segment the most because that's where most surrenders really happen. Now, an analysis from Kotak says that the move could have a negative impact of about 140 to 200 basis points on the margins of these life insurance companies. Let's just understand this better with an illustration. Consider a non-participating policy with a premium of 1 lakh annually. The policy is uh, surrendered in its fourth year, which means that three installments of premium or about 3 lakh rupees has already been paid in premium. Now, under the current regime, the first year is exempted from surrender charges. And hence, surrender value of 35% will be calculated only on 2 lakh, which is about 70,000. Now, as per the policyholder, will get 1.7 lakh uh, in terms of surrender value. Now, under the new proposal, the insurance regulator has said that the policyholder should get adjusted surrender value, which is surrender value plus refund beyond the threshold. Taking the same example of the same policy on a premium of 1 lakh annually, a threshold of 25,000 is set. Now, for three years, that premium has been paid and the threshold will become 75,000. Surrender value of 35% will be calculated on the threshold amount of 75,000, which comes to about 26,250. Add to that will be the refund beyond threshold. So deduct the threshold amount, that is 75,000, from the total premium paid of 3 lakh, which will give you 2.25 lakh rupees. Now put both these two together, that is the adjusted surrender value, and uh, that will be surrender value plus uh, refund beyond threshold, which means 226,250 plus 2.25 lakh, which comes to 2.51 lakh. Now a quick look at the impact of the new proposal. Under the current regime, on a premium of 3 lakh policy, the policyholder gets 1.7 lakh as surrender value. Under the proposed regime, the policyholder gets 2.51 lakh as surrender value. The insurance company gets to retain about 1.3 lakh as surrender charges under the current regime, which reduces to just about 48,750 under the proposed regime. Now, in the second change, IRDA has proposed to reduce the minimum sum assured in the regular premium category for age group more than 50 years. Uh, that has been changed or reduced to five times from seven times. Now, as the sum assured comes down, the minimum sum assured, insurers will be able to lower the premium price for the products in this particular category and spur the demand. The move is particularly positive for life insurance company as it has a higher exposure in that particular age group segment. All right, Yash, thanks a lot for that. So, short point is that uh, if you've been paying premium for over three <coughs> years uh, and did not choose to pay over the fourth year, what you would get earlier is a lot less than what you may get as it is proposed. But like Yash pointed out, this is just proposed. We'll have to figure out when this turns into reality as well. A lot of the life insurance stocks over the last couple of trading sessions have lost anywhere between 5 to 6 odd percent. Prakash Diwan now joins us. Prakash, uh, how big a uh, news piece do you think would this be from an investment thesis standpoint in insurance? Good afternoon, uh, Mangalam. So I don't think you should read too much into it. It's fairly hypothetical at this point in time. And as you said, the timelines are not known. Secondly, if as a policy holder, a potential policy buyer, if I have the freedom to be able to uh, surrender my policy before the maturity in case of any contingent uh, expenses that I have to meet, 
I would be more uh, inclined to put aside a larger quantum of money, right? I mean, today you don't do it because unless you're very sure that you will be able to pay for that particular term. But in between, if I had to move out, I would earmark certain larger sum of money saying, you know, I don't really lose much. So it's, it's, it's very flexible. It gives you a huge amount of flexibility as a policy holder, which means the quantums could go up. So what the insurance companies lose on margins, they could actually make up a size, ticket size. So I, I don't think it's too much to worry about. Uh, the market needs an excuse one way to book profits in some of the sectors. Uh, and this was as good as any. And then that's, that's precisely why you see that little bit of a reaction. Mm. Okay. Uh, Bharti is another stock which is weak in trade. It's down 1.5%. Today, Morgan Stanley has downgraded Bharti to an equal weight. Their target price stands at 1,015. The key reasons being for the downgrade, one, the stock has been an outperformer. Year to date, Bharti is up 24%, while the Nifty Sensex is up 15%. Two, the valuations for the Indian business are higher than the historical long-term levels. Third, they believe that if a tariff hike takes place in 2024 next year, it's well anticipated and priced in. In fact, there is a downside risk if that tariff hike gets delayed or doesn't happen. Uh, Prakash, uh, you know, Bharti's stock had crossed uh, 1,000 rupees. It's eased a bit. Do you think there could be some more downside? All the good news is priced in? So, yes and no, uh, Rima. I, I don't think uh, you could rule out a downside to it for the simple reason that the run-up has been in the last two months, fairly sharp, two, three months, actually. But if you look at Bharti from a longer-term perspective, has it really gone out of whack in terms of valuation? Has it stretched itself beyond what it should have been? I don't think so. Now, and if you factor in a terminal, or not terminal, but at least a long-range uh, up to level of 300, is the stock... Uh, available at a decent price for that? And the answer is yes. So somewhere between 800 to 1,000 is probably the sweet spot. Uh, and, and people will have different views, and that's what market is made of. But I would believe that you can't rule out the fact that there could be a price hike towards the second half of 24. And that would probably be steep, and it could be a sequential rise in, in, in uh, pricing. So there could be multiple reasons once 5G completely gets absorbed in the market in terms of your utility and utilization levels. So I would wait for that. I would I would be too pessimistic. But yes, at lower levels, it makes more sense from a risk reward perspective. Uh, <clears throat> okay, uh, Prakash, uh, short conversation today, but uh, kind of backed up with uh, a lot of other uh, stuff. Thank you very much for joining us, uh, as always. My pleasure. It's a pleasure uh, having you here on uh, CNBC TV18. Rupin Rajguru is with us, Head of Equity Investment and Strategy at ba uh, Julius Baer. Uh, Rupin, good to have you with us here. Uh, thank you for your time. I mean, uh, <clears throat> just come in on uh, what's what we're seeing on IT and what you guys are doing on uh, on IT services. I mean, it <clears throat> perhaps was a bit of an under owned kind of space. Maybe it is just that it needed a trigger. Uh, it's maybe it's just tactical and uh, will not go on. But uh, what what are your thoughts here with what's happening? Yeah. Hi. Uh, afternoon, Prashant. Uh, so IT. Uh, at this point of time is clearly appearing to be a, a tactical trade. So it's actually a leverage play on how the US economy pans out. Uh, so at this juncture, uh, at least the market consensus is getting towards a soft landing scenario, which actually is not a bad news from a corporate's perspective. So some of the reluctance which corporate had as far as spending is concerned, if the US economy were to uh, soft land, you know, probably that will that fears will no longer be there. And hence, we are seeing the momentum in the IT stocks. Uh, but having said that, uh, uh, now, uh, if you look through, uh, you know, the overall hiring which the IT companies at an aggregate level have done, uh, clearly this year has been quite abysmal. In fact, it has been negative. Uh, and uh, uh, while the TCVs, the, uh, you know, the, uh, has been good, uh, but the revenue growth has been tabled. Uh, and, and with all... Uh, it's very much possible Q3 would be weak. So probably tactically, the IT stocks have gone up and it might make sense to take some money off the table, uh, off the table in IT at this uh, current juncture. Okay, uh, you can take some money off the IT stocks because the tactical run-up has taken place. Rupain, afternoon. Uh, fresh investment, where would you advise? You also are recommending a rural recovery, especially the two-wheelers, as a tactical play. Would you put money there and where else? Yeah, afternoon, Rima. Uh, see, uh, 
in a market which is at its all time high level and not only in india but globally always you know it's difficult to find opportunities where is where there is a real value so we we look into the plays which have relative value uh, so i know in fact this theme we have been uh, talking about for now you know a couple of months and in fact last time on your channel i did mention about it, uh, this as well uh, so uh, yes uh, the two wheeler industry uh, probably we believe will see a cyclical upturn probably this festive season uh, has been uh, good uh, and uh, with potentially more money in the hands of the rural uh, population we will see some bit of excitement around that uh, the stocks have all gone up so it's not that they are in a, a, a value zone uh, but on a relative basis is there a room for them to go up from here probably yes uh, so hence uh, it is uh, overall play on the rural recovery which is backed by you know uh, the more money in the hands of people and probably we believe the uh, rural uh, downturn has bottomed out and we might uh, see an uptake uh, uh, overall in next few quarters so not only the two wheelers but some of the uh, rural facing nbfcs also we believe uh, would do well and some of the consumption uh, staples play which have a decent exposure on the rural india will also have uh, better quarters uh, at least in q3 and in q4 all right rupin just hang in there because as we speak uh, you no know, markets are hitting fresh uh, records we have Sensex at the high point, record high out there. The Nifty crossing that twenty one thousand four hundred mark, and most importantly, it's the Nifty Bank, which is inching closer towards that fifty thousand mark by uh, having crossed the forty eight thousand mark in just uh, today's trading session. Last fifteen minutes or so, it's been all about the Nifty Bank. For most part of the day, the Nifty Bank was absolutely flat, and that put a lid on the gains that the Nifty saw, largely on account of the IT names. But the second half, the Nifty Bank just woke up, and currently. Up at uh, around forty-eight thousand one hundred twenty. What's even more interesting is that some of the key constituents of the Nifty Bank, which include the likes of HDFC Bank, uh, Kotak Bank, are still six to ten percent away from all-time highs. We have, uh, you know, SBI, which is at a fresh fifty-two week high. ICICI Bank, which is at a fresh fifty-two week high. But HDFC Bank is still about six percent away. Kotak Bank is still about ten percent away. <coughs> Axis Bank is still about four five percent away. So once those stocks move higher, we'll only see the Nifty Bank. Move closer towards that fifty thousand mark. Uh, as we speak, uh, Rubin, your thoughts on the banking end of things? I mean, even though the Nifty Bank has outperformed over the last ten days or so, year to date uh, they have been laggards. And in that, some of the biggest names that I just spoke about have been underperformers as well. Would you bet on them? Uh, yeah, hi, uh, afternoon, Mangalam. Uh, in fact, if you see, whenever market uh, gets into all-time high, so typically uh, we always see some heavyweights participating and taking the banks to uh, all time high levels and this time around it is the banking and you are absolutely right in your observation on a relative basis banking index still uh, is underperforming nifty significantly this year ytd uh, and some of the large mega cap private sector banks have been uh, and in fact the largest public sector bank also has been relative underperform so in in the context wherein while all there are issues around nim compression and all that but at an overall level macro level if we are betting on the india story definitely banking and financials are uh, the uh, the sector which will be at the forefront and uh, on at an aggregate basis banking and financials uh, in particular is the only sector which is trading at a valuation much below its historic not only its historical average but vis-a-vis -vis, say a nifty's valuation you know the differential in valuation banking index is much uh, uh, cheaper than its historical average and if i were to add one more lever indian financials valuation as compared to some of the uh, emerging market peers in fact that valuation also it at its lowest point so all three put together and earnings have uh, been uh, pretty good uh, and uh, net net uh, uh, at an all time high market levels market participants do tend to look into places where there is relative value and definitely large mega cap uh, private sector banks has value and that's what uh, it is now uh, participating <coughs> in the rally mm. uh, rupin any uh, any new <coughs> sort of investments initiations ideas you can talk about uh, so uh, prashant <coughs> if you uh, look through you know uh, a at a big theme level uh, what we are like uh, as a theme you know a various legs of uh, what you call the capital market intermediaries right market at its all time high 
uh, and, and we are seeing volumes are pretty good. Uh, how can one benefit from that theme? So some of the capital market intermediaries, you know, be it uh, intermediaries on the depository side, RMT side, or even some of the brokerage companies uh, and asset management companies, because these companies are a direct beneficiary uh, out of the uh, buoyancy in the capital market. So I think this is a segment uh, clearly we believe if uh, structurally we all are positive on the Indian market and you know the activity in the capital market. So the, the intermediaries have incomes now, uh, which are combination of uh, transactional income as well as annuity income. And there are new sources of income also which they are getting. So that's one segment which uh, we clearly like. And just as a corollary, uh, with this appreciation uh, in the capital markets, uh, I think the wealth effect also will be seen. Uh, so uh, on the consumption side, some of the consumptions, be it on the discretionary side, be it hotels, vacation companies, uh, or you know uh, airlines, uh, ultimately when there is a feel good factor amongst people, uh, no, the, the spending level also gets uh, uh, no, uh, higher. So in that way, uh, some of the discretionary consumer spending also companies is something which we can look into, specifically uh, some of the uh, short ticket uh, uh, consumer discretionary items which will benefit because of the wealth effect. Rupain, we'll leave the conversation here for now. Thank you very much for joining in. Enjoy your uh, weekend. We will slip into a very short break on that note. On the other side, we'll get you a check on what dealing rooms are saying in our segment D Street Chatter and a few BTSD calls for the weekend coming up too. CMBC TV 18, embarking on a quarter century of excellence.
CNBC TV 18, embarking on a quarter century of excellence. It's been a party on D Street and everyone wants an in right now. Just as we speak, the market's at uh, record high for all indices. And now as we speak, the stocks which had been underperforming or not participating in this rally also want an in. So something like an HUL, that should come up for you. That's, uh, you know, put its hand up. The other stock that is doing well is Asian Pain. So consumer stocks generally have been under a wee bit of pressure. But now with the markets moving higher, maybe... It's a rising tide that is lifting boats of all these FMCG names as well. Asian Paints at the high point. We have uh, HUL2, which after trading in the red for most part of day, has moved into the green. So let's get in what the dealing room is saying. Is it a buzz with a lot of chatter? Nimesh joins in, as always, to get us an insight into what's happening out there. Nimesh. I, Mangla, when I spoke about party time, but I, I, I think, you know, for the last couple of days, uh, the, the retail investors don't seem to be partying too much because, you know, this rally is largely led by the large cap names. Uh, look at what, what is driving this market up. For the second day running, the IT index is up two and a, uh, almost 3.5% and, and all the IT stocks are buzzing. So, well, yesterday there was a short covering, but today it looks like there is buying as well from large institutions into the IT names. And remember, there is, there is under ownership in the IT stocks. So, not only the funds, but even the, even the retail investors and HNIs are, were not too exposed to the IT names. So, that's, that's a bit of a sulking point. I don't know, this rally is not led by a portfolio stock, which, which they have been holding on to. So, that's the overall feedback. The volumes are going to be higher side today, but that's because of the FTSE rebalancing as well. Remember, the FTSE reval itself is going to lead to an inflow of close to $500 million in today's trade. So, the FI number will look quite large in today's trade. Uh, the, apart from IT, the other two sectors which have done well and which is well bid as well is metal names. They have done well in today's trade and also the PSU bank stocks. Some bit of action seems to be back in the PSU bank names. Look at the internet chart of SBI, Bob, all are buzzing in trade today and, and there is well bid as well from the larger institutions. The only sector which is the underperformed today is the insurance names and that's largely because of the, of the regulatory changes which can hit the impact on the, uh, on the earnings. So that's been sulking. But uh, I understand there's going to be a small market at close, uh, basket buying as well in select large cap names. So maybe this momentum can support because of the flow uh, in, in, towards the end of today's trade. But uh, the rally in the last couple of days is largely large, uh, largely large cap. And again, within that, it's the IT which is helping the bulls to, uh, to, to inch uh, you know, fresh highs for the Nifty as well. Okay. Uh, Nimesh, in terms of individual names, uh, what's on your list today? Well, Prashant, the first, uh, for the first stock on my list today is Bandhan Bank. Uh, that stock is buzzing in trade within the private teams, a big outperformer in today's trade. The volumes are on the high side. There were small blocks as well, uh, around 40, la 40 lakh odd shares. But uh, the bigger trigger is, uh, I understand uh, the selling pressure from a, from a large, uh, you know, strategic investor seems to be largely over in Bandhan Bank. And after that, you're seeing a big up move in that stock. So that's the first one. The second name is Kfin. Uh, we, we, we all knew that there was going to be a large block, 10% equity got changed hands. The stock is under pressure, but I understand for, in terms of buyers, some good marquee names have bought into today's block deal, including some domestic mutual funds as well as AIF. So the disclosures could be interesting there. The third name is uh, Tips Industries. That stock is marginally under pressure today. But again, the street is anticipating for the last many days that there could be a large block deal very soon in Tips Industries. So that is something to track there. And the last one is Ember Enterprises. A uh, big move in that stock. Uh, it's, it's not a very large liquid stock, so to speak. Uh, on very small uh, buy, buy flows, that stock is buzzing in trade. It's up 700 percent. But also there was a UBS initiating report on, on Ember today morning and they have a target price of uh, 4075 uh, 4, So on back of flows and the uh, initiating report, Ember is up 8 percent in today's trade. Take that point, Nimesh. Thanks a lot for uh, putting all those stocks out for us. Nimesh said that there could be a possibility of a larger market at close buy trade coming in from uh, one of the institutions as well. And that seems to be playing out right now as we speak, you know, because all in sundry have been uh, moving higher in uh, as soon as the clock struck three. So you have, uh, I, I did point out, you know, HUL and Asian Pains, but look at Indusin Bank, that's moved higher as well. HDFC Bank, which had been an underperformer for most of today's trading session, has spiked higher, maybe perhaps uh, on account of uh, the FTSE rebalancing flows coming in as well. And names like Ultratech Cement or even Reliance for that matter, all of them have moved well and moved to the high point of trade. Good time to get in uh, the tomorrow trade or the Monday trade uh, for you. Mitesh Thakkar joins in. Mitesh, uh, what do you think one does now? Buy today for a reverse trade on Monday or maybe book profits and come back and do a fresh trade on Monday? So I think, you know, uh, we had a short-term target of 21, 450, 500. We are there in the NFT. So taking at least one-third profits off may not be a bad idea. 
Having said that, uh, I have one BTS in one STBT because we have been trading with long uh, only positions. I think, you know, today uh, being a weekend, might want to carry some short as well. So I have a STBT and ICSA proof. I think that's a stock which is breaking down the chart setup in the short term has turned negative. Uh, keep a stop at 525, look for a target of 505. And a BTST on grassing, which I would recommend uh, taking a BTST with a stop at 2119 for targets of 2160. Uh, I say Pru STBT and Grasim is a, uh, a BTST. Uh, so that is uh, Mitesh coming in there <clears throat> with some trading ideas. IT on the index itself, any views uh, with this 10% move in two, three days, two and a half days, uh, Mitesh? So we have had long calls uh, on stocks actually. I have not been tracking the Nifty IT levels, so difficult to comment on the Nifty IT index. But we have had long calls on HCL Tech, Tech Mahindra, etc. And I think that still looks like to be a good space. But again, I think, you know, very overbought from a fresh, Entry perspective, I will hold my horses. Nifty, uh, on the Nifty, the RSIs are now what, 85, hitting 85 kind of <clears throat> numbers, right, Mitesh? So looking a little uh, stretched in the very near term? Yeah, but I think, you know, Prashant, it's overbought, no doubt about it. So some caution is, is the only thing I would recommend because we have seen markets rally a lot in overbought situations also. I think that's hmm. not something which has not happened before. So I would not really be worried about that uh, part of the business. And uh, I think, you know, once... Um, uh, once the nifty kind of goes through some kind of consolidation, then you might see the overbought positions cooled off. So as of now, not looking at a reversal, but yes, some profit can happen just a weekend. We're, we're closing at the week high. So I think, you know, taking some profits off is a good idea. Maybe adding about 10, 15% of short positions uh, on stocks is also not a bad idea. All right. Uh, got that. <clears throat> Mitesh, thanks very much uh, for that. It's going to be a, almost a triple century, guys. Yeah. Yep. You know, <laughs> we started, uh, and I think in the, in the last hour or so of trade, uh, if you can just quickly have this up, uh, I think we've added about 100 points, I think. Yep, Let's, uh, for just, most uh, part of trade, we were at 21,300. <gasps> then uh, just <coughs> as we started the show, yeah. FT crossed past the 21,400 mark. And as we speak, it's uh, 21,480. For all practical purposes, we might cross 21,500 by the end of today's we trading session as well, which is still 13 minutes away. Uh, so maybe, you know, just a few bids on uh, names like Reliance, ICICI Bank, HDFC Bank. And you will be at the 21,500 marks a day, right? Uh, uh, Mangala, we've added uh, one, 150 points in the last hour from the time that we started on the Nifty. Uh, wow. You know, so that is. Uh, that and is the quite Nifty fun Bank thing. has added close to about you know 400 points in the yeah. last one hour. Yeah. No, this is uh, this is quite some something. Uh, even by the, uh, the sort of you know we've seen a lot and uh, markets <laughs> have been uh, up a lot, but even then you sometimes uh, marvel. Two and a half percent this week, so this is turning out to be pretty much as good. Uh, or some pockets like the IT sector, etc., even better than what we saw uh, last week. So uh, that's where we're at uh, right now. Mangala. Yeah, it reminds you of that saying, right, where they say, how did the market go up <coughs> first slowly and then suddenly? And suddenly. That's <laughs> exactly what has happened all of today's trading session. It was slow and then sudden. Why just today over the last two weeks or so itself? But I'll just be mindful of uh, the broader markets, you know, because uh, we started the you know, mid-cap index in line with the frontline indices, but now it's become a stark underperformer in today's trading session itself so far. Like Namesh pointed out, you know, most of the gains have been led by the large caps. And in large caps as well, it's only a clutch of IT stocks which have led to most of the gains. And the second half, we had the entry of the Nifty Bank itself. But the mid-cap index is all but in the red right now, even as we speak, holding up with just around 45 odd points. And if you pull up, uh, you know, the crisscross lines, you would see that for most part of the day, we had the green line above the red line, even now. Uh, the green line is marginally above the red line. The advanced decline is split right down the middle. They are coming as close as uh, one gets towards the end of today's trading session, which tells you that maybe, you know, there is some sense of uh, profit booking, some sense of nervousness, or maybe some sense of, you know, overbought uh, sort of behavior in the mid-cap end of things. So that's something we'll keep an eye out on. But uh, good time to take a short break. Come back on the other side. We'll uh, get chatting with uh, Sudeep Bandopadhyay and uh, at the same time, we'll track the closing of the market as well. CNBC TV 18, embarking on a quarter century of excellence.
CNBC TV 18, embarking on a quarter century of excellence. Well, it's another spectacular rally in today's trading session. The Nifty is 18 points, 17 points away from hitting the 21,500 mark and a four-digit gain on the Sensex. One pocket which is a bit subdued today are some of the power names. IREDA, lower circuit of 10%, PFC, REC have corrected a bit. You've got GMR Power, PTC India Financial in the red too. And KFIN, where we had the large block deal of 20% take place early in the morning. That stock is weighed down by that supply pressure, down close to about 4%. So Deep Bandopadhyay uh, with us on the show. Um, so Deep, uh, in the last two days, yesterday and today, have you made any purchase orders? Well, well, definitely, uh, yes, I've uh, done that uh, for some of the clients. And, uh, you know, what we picked up is Reliance Industries. And mm. uh, these are long-term investments. I'm not talking about what it, uh, how much it went up uh, yesterday or today. Uh, but this is for long-term. Uh, the other stock which we have been looking at has been Tata Power, and there also some purchases were made. Again, this is a long-term buy. Uh, it's got nothing to do with uh, yesterday's or today's move. You didn't buy anything in the <coughs> IT pack, uh, Sudeep. Your thoughts? Well, I think uh, we have been recommending uh, Mangalam some uh, uh, buy in Wipro for the aggressive investors. I think this is a grossly under-owned stock. Uh, and uh, we definitely expect some excitement uh, coming back in Wipro. It's moved up a bit today, but I think, uh, you know, if you compare with the peers and all that, it's uh, definitely a big laggard. Uh, so, but I don't think actual buying has taken place in Wipro yet. Uh, but I think uh, I would still uh, recommend for an aggressive investor to buy in Wipro. Mm. You, you, in a way, you mean conservative investor, right? Because that has gone up the least. So, it is, yeah. uh, valuations are the, uh, the cheapest in the sector. So... I mean, yeah, upside is questionable and perhaps looks hazy, not clear, but downside also may be a little more protected. I, I agree with you, Prashant, to that extent, but uh, you're absolutely right in saying that uh, there were a lot of, uh, you know, confusion as far as the upside uh, in case of Wipro. I think uh, Mr. Premzi has gone on record uh, commenting about his unhappiness on the, uh, the way the company is run uh, and things like that. So probably we'll see some changes as well. But considering uh, the, the, the strength of the inherent strength of the company and considering the opportunities which are emerging for Indian frontline IT companies uh, in the global markets, uh, I think it's a matter of time before Wipro also starts uh, to pick up. So yes, downside is limited, but I think upside potential is a bit hazy. To my mind, I think upside definitely is going to be there if somebody is a little patient investor. Mm. Would you bet on some management change at Wipro? Because the current CEO's term only comes to an end in July of 2025. So still a year and a half away. Well, I think it will be a little speculative. But, uh, you know, uh, we, we all saw the statements made by uh, Mr. Azim Premzi. And I think uh, that doesn't, uh, you know, augur well for the existing management. Or, uh, uh, you know, maybe some of the changes may come in. We have seen this uh, happening many times earlier also in Wipro. So uh, while I would like to speculate on the current incumbent's uh, continuance, but uh, I think uh, something may be in the offing. All right. And finally, are you looking at any of these small uh, small cap names? J. Kumar Infra, for instance, up 11% as we speak. And uh, the one orders worth nearly 900 crores in this month itself. Uh, a couple of these rail names continue to do well. Titagar Rail Systems up around 5%. Tex Maco Rail, I remember, was up around 3.5%, was up a lot more in the earlier part of the day. They won orders worth nearly 1,300, 1,400 odd crores as well. So any of these big infra rail government plays ahead of the election, so central election that is? Mangalam, uh, I think the rails are a little scared to touch anymore now. They have gone up really too much. At this level, it is a bit risky. But infra, definitely, yes. Uh, we are looking at PNC infra. Uh, that definitely uh, does look good at current levels. There are a lot of uh, monetization of their uh, projects. Uh, I understand 20 plus is going to happen in the near future. So that's one script uh, which I think uh, one can look at. Uh, also, as far as uh, you know, the PSU uh, basket is concerned, PSU banks definitely can be looked at uh, because uh, you know there's, there's this entire power sector what is happening, and we have seen PFC, REC rally quite a bit. Uh, but the big checks for power projects and power uh, 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 will be cut by the PSU banks. They are the ones who are going to finance also. And uh, we haven't focused on them uh, from that angle. And I believe uh, uh, that there's a big opportunity sitting in the PSU uh, banking names. 
uh, even now, and that should be looked at. Uh, Sadeep, uh, short conversation, but thank you very much uh, for uh, joining in. Enjoy your weekend. Uh, counting down to what has been a spectacular session for our markets. This is a resounding momentum scene today. Uh, the Nifty gets close to 21,500. The high today is 21,492. So eight points shy of that magic number of 21,500. But we're going to go home with a 300-point gain on the Nifty, which is over and above the 250-point rally that we had yesterday. The Sensex is up. Uh, 1,000 points this week. We've seen a 2.5% rally on the Nifty and the Sensex. Well, the mid-cap index, too, didn't keep quite in step today. The mid-cap index trailed. The front line is just up close to about 0.1%. But for the week, it's still up 2.6%. The big winners are IT, the Nifty IT index, 4.7% higher in the last two days, 8.5% up move. But banks too caught up. The Nifty banking index and the PSU banking index, particularly in the last one hour, saw quite the up move. The Nifty banking index up 400 points. Uh, both engines firing uh, for the market, the IT and the banking index. In the last hour of trade, we had a bunch of other heavyweights contribute as well. So case in point, something like Reliance <coughs> moved higher. We did see some uh, you know, recovery come by in a couple of these consumer names as well. Asian Paints ends the day with uh, high, uh, you know, at the high point of trade. HUL is the other one which moved higher from the lows as well. And we did see some buying in names like LNT too. Among the underperformers in uh, the frontline end of things, uh, we did have the life insurance companies not do too well. So HDFC Life and uh, SBI Life uh, were lower by about a percent, two percent uh, and almost three, four percent over the last couple of trading sessions. And in the broader markets, again, it was uh, some of these PSU banks doing well. The Union Bank ended higher. Nalco Metals names uh, did well as well, as did uh, some of the mid-cap IT names, Persistent, CoForge. One stark underperformer in the mid-cap end of things, apart from the uh, you know uh, insurance names, were a couple of these cement names as well. India Cements, Dalmia Bharat, and uh, we had Interglobe Aviation end lower too. And Delivery was one of the stocks which was among the bigger losers this week with a cut of almost 7% ending the week uh, at the low point as well. You know, just uh, lo looking at the last two weeks' uh, returns because it's been uh, like one long uninterrupted rally for the last two weeks. The Nifty is up 5.9% uh, in uh, just two weeks. The Bank Nifty is up 7.4%, uh, a two-week change. Mid-cap index is up 45 uh, 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 Sorry, mid-cap index is up 5 and small-cap index is up 45 uh, percent So, uh, you know, that's the uh, extent of the moves uh, that uh, we've seen. And I suspect that uh, we'll put some of these figures out in a bit. PSU banks, IT and real estate perhaps will be, sectorally speaking, the three areas uh, which have done the most, which have done the west, uh, best over the last uh, two uh, trading weeks. Well, <clears throat> a fantastic way to end the week. Uh, it's also a wrap on this edition of a Closing Bell from all of us here. Uh, it's goodbye. Thank you very much for staying with us. But don't go anywhere. Uh, Smart Money will pick up on all of the action in just a bit. century of excellence.